Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie for those of you who might be new and I am a stay at home homeschooling mom to five kiddos. And on my channel, you can see tons of planner related videos, usually on Saturdays. And then on Tuesdays, I upload videos related to home, health or homeschool. And today you're going to see kind of a combination of homeschool and planning because I want to share with you how I take all of my information from my homeschool planner, which I recently did a video about this planner. So go back a couple of videos and check out that uh, if you're interested. And this is like my overview of the entire school year, but I need sort of daily focuses. I don't really do lesson planning like you might typically think about for a teacher book or even a homeschool planner or something like that. This is what my weekly focus plans or um, record keeping looks like. So I wanna kinda take you along and plan next week. So here is my, what you're looking at is my notebook for the whole month of March. So it goes by weeks and how my planner is set up. I have an overview of the week. I use this a lot of times for like my cleaning uh, what kinds of uh, projects or deep cleaning I want to do on different days. And then this is my menu section. And since this week is like I'm preparing for next week's homeschool, I don't have this filled out for my menu yet. And then this is my blank homeschool section. And then after my homeschool, I start my daily pages. So like Monday of next week, Tuesday, and so on. So here is the current week that we are on. And on a Sunday or sometime before Monday uh, in school starting, I like to have this at least thought through. So what do I do to go from this to this? That's what I want to share with you today. Um, in the front of my homeschool planner, I keep my sticky notes. Now, if you're watching this in real time, my how I print on these sticky notes video has not um, published yet but it is ready and it is coming. It's in the lineup. You should see it in a couple of days or weeks, depending on when you're watching this, or it might already be up. So don't worry, I will show how I make these. But because of the way I have it formatted, I can make two weeks worth at a time. So I have my stickies ready. And what these sticky notes are for are all of the kind of core subjects, so math, language, arts, and reading for my kindergartner, and then math, language, arts, handwriting, typing, reading, and piano lesson, or piano practice for my next oldest. Oh, I need to adjust these sticky notes because I can't quite see. So let's move you up and let's there we go, now I have a little better room. So that's what these sticky notes are for. They are to remind me who needs to do what. <laughs> um, and they also are a way for me to track. Um, I don't worry about filling all of these in every single week. I worry if I've gone a whole week and there are no check marks in my daughter's math. That means that as we're going about our day and I'm helping this one with math and I'm helping this one with stuff and I'm keeping track of my preschooler and my toddler and keeping them busy, somehow I forgot to remind this child to do their math or something like that. So it's more for me to make sure I'm hitting enough of the subjects I like to on a regular basis and know where I stand. So you can see this week, um, today is Wednesday. And so I don't have it all filled in because we're in the middle of our school day. So I will start checking these off and figure out what I need to focus on. I haven't done language arts with these two. I do it together. So I'll, you know, I'll focus on that. And that's what the purpose of this is, not to check everything off. But so on any given day, I can look at it and say, do I need to focus on something or are we kind of doing and following our rhythm as I like to? So those sticky notes are in, that's all I need to do. The next thing I like to do is draw, write out these headers. So these headers are morning basket, history, science, and read aloud. And this encompasses all of the subjects 
that are not over here. And this is kind of the totality of all of the subjects we might hit on any given week. So let me go ahead and write these. And you know what? I might try to zoom you in. I'll zoom you in a little bit and then zoom you back out when I'm actually pulling from my stack of books over here and showing how I record the information. And then I like to just do a little line because it, it helps me keep the boxes separate and kind of compartmentalize my information because I'm not always neat when I write things down. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking each of these things and write down the things I think I need as a reminder a prompt, a focus, or even um, if I'm going to try to record keep and, and as we're actually going through this week of school, if I want to track something that we are doing, I'm going to kind of prep that. So every week might be slightly different, my needs. Um, right now, we are transitioning. So the things that we are doing this week, we have a new poet, we have a new artist, we have a new history book, all of these things that would don't typically turn over at the same time. I have a lot of new things. So I'm actually going to be writing some of the names of the new things to help remind me as we start new, kind of like new units or chapters, uh, depending on what it is. So the first one is I want to look up what hymn I chose we are going to be doing, um, we started this last week or, or the week that you're watching this when I'm filming it. Wow, that was confusing. I'm filming it one week and we are on the third day of this song and we will continue it next week. That's what I meant to say. So I have a section back here. Again, I've done an entire video on my planner. So if you wanna see that and understand this part a little bit more, just go there. So I'm doing When I Survey the Wonderful Cross so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write that in. So I wrote down the name of the hymn, and this has reminded me, and this is why I plan like this. I want my kids, my older kids, to do one of the verses of the hymn as copy work. So I need to kind of have that prepped. And I also need the reminder because we've never done that before. It's something I have been building up to. And so now I want to start this week when we do homeschool, copy work, verse 1. So I... They have their notebooks. They'll have their notebooks at the table. I can help them with this. This is prompting me and reminding me and I don't need any other supplies or to print anything off or anything like that. Um, this is how I want it to be and this is all the information that I need. So then the other thing that is new, hang on, I like to refer to my previous week. So there's the hymn um, we have multiplication songs and I was forgetting to do them for a while, so that's why I wrote it here. I think I'm gonna remember, so I'm not gonna write that down. Um, I'm gonna come back to Spanish. Bible is the same. It's a, it's a book where I just flip to the next page. So I actually talk about this in my morning basket video, which um, went up last week, so you can check that out. We have started a new poet, and actually I need to look that up. It's um, on the computer. So I'm going to pause and look that up and then write it down in my planner. I ended up just writing it off screen because I needed to keep comparing it to my screen um, and I'm filming on my screen. So the poem and the resource that I'm using right now 
is a poem of the month subscription. It's free. It comes to your email and you get a couple of activity ideas and the poem and a little biography. So I will try to remember to include that in my description box down below so you can find out more information. But it's Afterno Afternoon on a Hill is the poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay. So we are going to start doing that. And since it's a new one, I need that prompt so I know what book to look into. Whoops, I must have gotten pen on my page. Okay, the next thing is uh, our artist is actually new. Um, I finally got in the mail these famous painting cards. Oh, hey, buddy. Can I some more popcorn? Go sit down and ask Evan, okay? Close my door quietly. Sorry, my kids are eating lunch and watching their homeschool YouTube playlist. So I have a bunch of educational related videos and they are watching it and I can hear them just down the hall. Okay, where was I? This is a resource that I have been eyeing for a while. It's the Us Born Famous Painting Cards and every card is a different artist. So there's 30 in here. And it's just a brief um, picture and description of a particular artist. So we're gonna do Vincent Van Gogh. Here is the picture. And then here is the brief description. And I wanted to work my way up to Charlotte Mason picture studies. So in the 2020 to 2021 school year, I am going to do their artist studies. But until then, I'm kind of piecing together my own. And one of the resources that I'm going to use along with it is this picture book that I found at the library. And I, this is why I do planning like this every single week. Because even though I have this and I know I wanna do Vincent Van Gogh, I had not looked through this picture book yet. And look how many words are on every single page. My children will not sit through this. Um, and we don't spend this much time on a artist, on an artist in the morning. So I am going to only allow myself to do two or three pages of this per day. And we'll just slowly work our way through this picture book. We'll study the art in this book. We'll study the painting and talk about it and kind of Charlotte Mason style, but you know, on my own. And um, this is what we're going to use this week. So all I really wanna do is write down Van Gogh. just to remind myself that we have switched artists. Um, and again, it was just kind of a coincidence that our hymn changed and our poem changed and our artists and all of that changed right in the same week. It doesn't usually happen like that. It's a little more staggered. The next thing I wanna check is our Spanish. It's part of our morning basket. This is the curriculum that we use and I will have this link down below as well. Um, I just wanna check where we are and see if, just see where we were. So we've been doing these two pages. This is the English, this is the Spanish. We listen to recordings and go through our lesson. Um, we need more work on this. So we're gonna continue with this next week. This will be our lesson, we'll review it every day. And if I feel like we're getting it towards the end of the week, I'll just go back the last few lessons and review them. So. That is fine. Um, since I am not listing all of the things that we do in our morning basket, like I just kind of remember what we do and I have a stack of books uh, when we sit down to do morning basket, I don't need to write anything down. I'll just, I'm not doing anything different for Spanish, so I'll just go to Spanish. Uh, what's the next thing? Uh, poetry composer, we're doing Bach. Um, we did that last week, so I don't need to do anything else. I already did artist. Let me go back. Bible and memory I don't is the same. Spanish is the same. Multiplication is the same. Okay, so those are the only things that had kind of changed, and I really wanted to write myself a prompt. Now let me do history. So <laughs> I recently got story of the world. I'll do this in another video and I've touched on this in my morning basket video and my homeschool planning video. I had prepared curriculum for an entire year's worth of history and for some reason our last and final unit we just flew through. But we still have three or four months left of school in our year and I was like that's too long to not do any history at all. 
So I just kind of got a jump start on next year's history. So I wanted to try Story of the World. You read out of this book every day. The chapters are fairly short. So here's the introduction and they sometimes have a sub chapter or a second section. So we only read the first section and now we're going to pick up here and read this section, which is a couple pages. And then this is the teacher manual and workbook. So let me zoom out just a teeny bit. So what I wanted to focus on because anything that we do in history for the rest of the school year, I'm considering bonus history, right? So we've already done our entire history curriculum for a school year. So I am not concerned about how quickly or slowly we go through the lessons. And with that being said, that means I wanna focus more on doing more activities than I probably typically would. So I am going to go into the chapter. So this, because I'm filming this in the middle of a week, we are finishing that chapter one that I showed you. So next week, or uh, introduction. So next week we will start chapter one. All of this is other encyclopedia books you can look at, review questions, narration exercises, more review questions. Um, part of this I think is because there's two sections. So this is for the first section of chapter one and this is the second section of chapter one. We might only get through one section next week because we're also gonna do map work on one day, a coloring page on one day, and an activity, I think, on one day. So I didn't highlight it, but I think we're actually gonna do this activity. So I get these, this is actually a sticky note, and let me show you where I get it. In my homeschool planner in the front flap, I have them here. Now, when I bought them in the store, two of these were actually together, and that is the width of one sticky note. They're a little bit transparent, they're in neon colors, and I wanted them more like a highlighter strip, so I just took my, um, like my slicing paper cutter, and I cut them lengthwise in half, and so now I have these little itty bitty like sticky note highlighters. And this lets me kind of go ahead and highlight things that I wanna do. These, the colors have no meaning, it's not color coded. Um, but it lets me highlight what I think I wanna do and plan ahead a little bit. But then as it gets closer to whatever week it's going to be, if I feel like, wow, I just don't think we're gonna like this activity or have time, I haven't actually marked the page. So it's my way of marking the page without marking the page. And yes, um, it does transfer a little bit. I picked up a teeny bit of the ink on the back of this sticky note, but you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't like smear it anywhere else and it doesn't, it doesn't bother me and it doesn't matter. So I have figured out in the teacher manual what I wanna do. And I guess all I need to do in my planner, um, first I just need to check that I have like the map and the coloring page. So the second half of this book is all student activities. So, oh, I'm getting interrupted again. Buddy, I'm doing a video. You need to go out and ask your brother, okay? Close the door. Close the door. I'll be right out. The entire second half of the book is, or more, is the student workbook. So this is where you get the maps, the coloring pages, the activities, all of that kind of stuff. So I have already gone and I have pulled out and printed the ones I need. So let me get all the way back. Okay, so we're in the history. I wanna do chapter one. Chapter one. And I wanna do the map work, the coloring page, And if we have an extra day, I'm not exactly sure yet how long these kinds of things will take us because this is a brand new book to me. So if we have time, we'll do, oh, what was the name of that activity? Let me look it back up. Uh, make a cave painting. So we'll make a cave painting. I really hope I'm in frame. I didn't check. Okay, good. So I want to make a cave painting. 
I will let you know in future videos if I do more plan with me, homeschool plan with me style. So let me know if you're interested in this kind of video in the description or in the comments, and maybe I'll do more of these going forward. Um, but that is how, this is all I can kind of predict at this moment because I'm not too familiar with the curriculum yet because it's new to me curriculum. All right, the last thing I'm almost done here is science. We are currently doing the marine biology unit study from the good and the beautiful. I have the digital version, so it is on my laptop. And right now we have taken a pause. We're about halfway through the, I don't know, the text. And we are doing a lap book. I will try to remember to find it and link it down below. I might have purchased it from Teachers Pay Teachers, but I want to finish our lap book. So we've been working on it this week. I want to finish it by next week. And then the week after this, we'll pick back up in the text of the Marine Biology Unit Study and work on finishing that. Um, the other thing is if you saw my morning basket video that I posted a, a little while ago, I have tons of picture books related to the ocean. So picture books, some are picture books, some are kids kind of reference type books. So the, that is what we're going to focus on. They will do their lap book work. I'll do some of the work with them. Like if we're writing down facts and gluing things in, I'll show them where it goes. While they're doing the coloring and cutting and gluing and writing, I will be reading picture books and other reference material. So we are just continuing to fill out our whole science thing. And then I'm pretty sure that next week we will still be in Farmer Boy. We are doing that as a read aloud. I'm playing it as an audiobook. Um, I just check it out from my library through the app on my phone and play it over our Bose speakers, usually when we're eating lunch. So. I won't write it down though in case we um, finish it early and we are in fact doing something else next week. But that is what I do. I want to be able to take everything that we're going to do for school and just give myself a snapshot, a focus. I don't want to be overwhelmed by all the things I have. I don't want to be overwhelmed by all the plans that are in my entire year. I want to see if there's something that I need to focus on. Every once in a while, we don't do any of this enriching stuff and we really just have to focus on math and language arts. So my weekly plan would reflect that. There's no way for me to kind of know that in my, in general, um, you know, homeschool plan book. I have to know week by week and kind of evaluate what I need to do. Do I need to focus on all this stuff and do kind of our normal routine where we do a little bit of everything? Do I need to drop something? Um, do I need to pause something? Are we getting finite? I like, are we getting towards the end of our science unit? Maybe I need to write a note to start planning the next unit. Where do I wanna go from here? Things like that. So that is how I keep myself organized. Um, definitely it took me at least twice as long because I was describing it to you guys. So this does not usually take me more than 10 minutes every single week. Um, the thing that would take the longest is if I am pulling supplies, craft supplies, or downstairs um, making photocopies. That's what would take me the longest is if I'm doing things like that. But to actually flip through my books and see where we're at and make sure I have everything ready really only takes me five or 10 minutes every week. So it's a really good system. And if you want more information about that, leave me questions in the comments so I can answer specifically or I will gather them and do a follow-up video uh, sometime in the near future to flesh out more how I plan, how I keep organized, and honestly, how I spend as little time as possible having to like plan and prep homeschool because isn't that what we all want? We wanna do more homeschool and do less planning. <laughs> I hope this is a good video for you guys. I will see you next time on my channel. Bye.